Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Arturia Pigments 4 and continuing on the Resonance Week, today we have an ARP called Ambient Resonance and it's kind of fun because the sound kind of goes through different things and we're using basically self-oscillation to create this tone with an exception of the utility engine which we're going to get to in just a bit. So the patch sounds like this. And without the kick drum. So this ARP is kind of cool to maybe put in something a little bit subtle, maybe more like the patch name suggests, a little bit more ambient kind of things. It kind of just having it float there. Now some of the, uh, the macros are going to be toned. If we want to darken this a little bit or brighten it up a little bit, we can do that. And also just the resonance, the sub, and the effects kind of like how I normally do. So with that being said, let's go ahead and recreate this bad boy. So file, new preset here. Now, uh, let's turn off the effects so we can just hear this patch by itself. So nothing too crazy, right? It's kind of <laughs> kind of uninspiring without the effects. It's where a lot of the, the magic and the sculpting happens. So with that being said, let's kind of look at the utility engine and let's leave this open for now. But first things first, what we need to do is get this self-oscillation going. So let's turn off our wavetable, the engine one, engine two. We can leave this one on for now. But what we should do is just turn down this sub. So th this is going to be kind of what it sounds like for us once we start making it. Okay, so first thing, let's go to the matrix 12 and change this from low pass 24 to low pass 12, increase our resonance all the way to the top. And once we start moving this cutoff, we have a tone, right, from self-oscillation. So if we look here, this is kind of a cheat code, right, 291, like I, like I explained in the last video, but we have to tune these, right? And the way I've tuned these is that we can just turn on engines, go to maybe analog, for example, and we have a saw wave. Let's send this to the second filter and kind of just tune these against the saw wave because we know that the saw is going to be in tune. And then always right click for a little bit finer adjustments there. So it's pretty much in tune. It's close, but there's a little bit difference there. I think the 292 is a little bit different. And last thing, we need to add keyboard tracking because we want those notes to follow the, uh, the pitch, right? Okay, so we're done with our saw wave. We can bring this volume down and even just turn off the engine. So we basically have this here. And then, so our volume on this filter is gonna be left at zero. But we're gonna be doing something interesting with this pan. So you see this is at 0.92 from random one. So once we play this here, Every note that we hit is going to be randomized, right? And that and that random value is attached to the pan of the filter. So it's kind of just going around our heads the whole time, which is kind of cool for ambient stuff. We never really know where the note's going to land in the stereo field. So with that being said, let's go ahead and add that, right? So we're going to be using a random one. So we're changing this to sample and hold sample from white notes and re-triggered from the poly keyboard. So random one. Right up here, let's drag this to the pan and then change it from Turing to sample and hold, white noise, and then samples from the poly keyboard. So every note that we hit is going to give us a different random value. And what we need to do here is give it a good amount of modulation, which I think is like I said, 0.92, something like that, 0.92. But we really don't know where it's going to be coming from. This is also a sequence so we need to turn this off for now. So this is the original here. This is what we're at here. So we're pretty, pretty much close. Let's double check our envelopes here. So there's a little bit of difference. So with this here, our attack is going to be one, which is going to be default, I believe. And then the decay is 300, which is also default. And then we change it a little bit, 314, so a tiny bit more. So 314, and then no sustain at, at all here, and then the release is going to be 197, so we need to increase this to 197, something like that. And that's pretty much the majority of what we have to do in this side. We do have the utility engine, which we should talk about. So this is where I kind of like adding some low end after the fact to kind of keep the low end nice and clean. So 
So we have the texture of the stuff that we're doing with the self oscillation, but once we get to the low end, it's not gonna be weird, it's just gonna be a nice clean sub. So basically what we need to do is take the third macro and modulate this to a value of 0.72. So let's go ahead and do that. Turn on our oscillator. The output brings us all the way down, change from filter to direct out. And then macro three, drag and drop. And then Jesus Christ, I already forgot the value. 0.72, there we go. 0.72, right about there. And then read label macro three sub. And I kind of just like using macro three, four is usually for effects, one and two are kind of whatever we want to do. So we have that low end there, which is kind of nice to do. So right here we're at 0 0.764. So let's go, I guess, and match that 0 0.47. So what? Jesus Christ. 0.764. Here we go. 0 0.764. Okay, that's fine. Let's not touch that after that. Okay. So we're pretty much in a good spot. Sounds about the same. So now let's go ahead and check out our effects, which we're using quite a bit here. So let's turn these on and go to our effects page. So for the first bank, or I guess technically second bank, the FXB, let's turn that off. And the first one, we're basically gonna be using a distortion into two delays, kind of like how we did previously. So the first one's gonna be distortion, so let's change to distortion. And this one's gonna be quite maxed out for the drive. So let's go to the drive all the way to 48. So full distortion here, and we're gonna be going to tape. And then the dry wet, as you can see, macro number one. So, or what is this, macro four? Yeah, macro four, which I believe we're using for effects as well and kind of just keeping the distortion in there. So drag and drop, bring this down, bring this all the way up to one. Let's label this FX for now. So FX, oh my, FZ, that's the first time I've done that. FX, there we go. So now when we play. You get kind of something like that, which is pretty cool. Okay, so moving on from here, as you can see, we have much more low end in this one, and I don't really want that, so that's why we're gonna be using the filter after that. So we can turn this guy on. We're gonna be at high pass 24, and our cutoff is gonna be 334, and this is gonna be post, right? So change this from post, and then, or change it to post, and then 334. I don't think we touched a resonance, 707. Yeah, that's gonna be fine. All right, so we're pretty much in the same spot here. Now we go into our first delay, which is gonna be a quarter note. So first delay, quarter note, I think by default. And we're changing this to ping pong, so let's go ahead and do that. And our dry wet's gonna be at 44, which is gonna be on macro four, which is an effect. So we can actually just do that now. So bring this down, and then for our effects, let's drag and drop and bring this to 0.44. So we have our, uh, our delays there. And then we're changing a couple of things here. So the fine is negative 0.149. Our feedback, we change that. 352. No, that's fine. So yeah, just do a little bit of this here. So this high, high pass is going to be 215. Okay. Now this one's going to be interesting as well. This, this low pass here. So we're at 2377. 2377. Seven. I guess that's fine. Okay. So here's something kind of cool. So this is modulated by the random one. So the same one that we had, this is giving a random notes left and right to the stereo field. And this is controlling randomization of how much are we cutting off the high end of our delays, which is kind of cool. So this is going to be at 0.09. So we just need to drag and drop this here at 0.09. Each random note is deciding, should we cut more of the, the high end of the delays or less? And it kind of just keeps going with that vibe. And the second delay is going to be doing the same thing here, but we're pretty much just doing a one over eight dotted. So let's go ahead and add that. So change from the time from straight only to dotted and then go down to one over eight. And for this guy, ping pong as well. And then the fine is actually pretty <laughs> to the right. So 1.10 milliseconds. And what is our dry wet here? Going to be 44. So the same thing. So let's bring this down all the way to zero. Drag and drop the macro at 0.44. So we have that already on our macro. Okay, so now what we need to do, I think the feedback is the same here. Yep. And then our high pass is going to be 351. So 351. And the same kind of deal on the low pass, right? So let's bring this down to 3803. 3803, where are you? Okay, and then same kind of deal here for that, and it's gonna be 0 0.07 modulation, so drag and drop, and then 0 
Okay, pretty sweet here. So now we're going into the FXB and we're gonna be doing some interesting stuff. So let's turn off this filter, this reverb, and then we're gonna be using a parametric EQ for this bad boy. So let's go ahead and add the EQ. So basically this is kind of interesting. So if we go to our first one, this low shelf here, we're at 182 Hertz. So let's go here, 182, something like that. And we're kind of just hacking off a lot of stuff that we don't really want. So our low gain is gonna be negative 15, so. Cutting off a lot of low end because we have the sub to carry that, right? And that's going direct out. So we really don't need the low kind of money stuff for the main mid rangey stuff, right? So for these guys, I don't think we're doing any, what is this? The first one? Yes, the first one is going to be 183, 183, something like that. Where are we? That's fine. Can I bring that down as well? So I have a little bit steeper. And then I think we're bringing up this high shelf just a little bit. So we're going to be at 5142 on our high shelf. One, four, that's about fine. And we're bringing this up just a little bit, maybe like 1.29 deeps. Maybe being a little bit more here. And that should be fine for that. So now we're going to be going into a reverb. So let's turn on our reverb. And some of our settings here are going to be the pre-delay is 20, which is default. I think a lot of this is going to be default, except for the low pass frequency. We want to change that just a little bit. So what do we have exactly here? 2140. Kind of fine. And then our dry wet's going to be 49. So pretty high up there. So bring that down and drag and drop M4. And then we're going to go to uh, 0.49. Okay, next up and last but not least is gonna be the multi-filter. Now, if you're wondering why this is here at the very end is because the way we set that up this patch, right, we're using this filter to get that tone, right? And we have all these effects after it and we still wanna sculpt everything with those effects on them, right? So that's why we're using the last box here or the last effects here in the uh, in the chain to use as a filter. So we're gonna click here and go to multi-filter. It would be cool if all the other regular filters were in here, that would be pretty awesome. But anyway, we're going to be using a low pass 12 here, and then the cutoff is going to be at 793. So low pass and then 793. There we go. We're pretty close. Is that it? 793. There we go. That's fine. Okay, now our Q is going to be at default zero, but we're going to be using this on a macro two. So we can go macro two and drag and drop this here, bring that down. So our modulation amount is going to be 0 0.40. Or zero, and that's gonna be on the second macro. So this is gonna be resonance, so res is just fine. We're gonna be doing some modulation with this guy here, the random one at point, uh, zero 0.09. So again, once we're kind of putting this here, the random is gonna be point zero 0.01, point zero 0.09. And again, on this cutoff here, we're actually using something else as well. We're using macro one at point 0.32. So drag and drop to so 0.32 and then our tone is kind of in the center here at 0.5 so we can bring this to 0.5 about something like that and relabel this tone okay so we're in a good spot as far as our sound generation our effects and for the most part most of our modulation so this one's an arp right because we turn this on going to dive into the ARP here and kind of take a look at this. So we're turning this on and we're going to be on the arpeggiator. So we're going to do some auto regen. So let's just go ahead and turn this on here. So one over eight right over here. And then our rate's going to be one over eight. So by default, it's one over 16, which is kind of fast, but we can bring this down. It's really up to you how fast you want it to go. And we're going to be using some poly rhythms for this as well. And I'll show you why. So we're going to be using a total of 16 steps. However, on the octave, we're going to be using only 10. So let's bring this down for the octave. Let's bring this all the way down to 10, something like that, because we want something a little bit different every single time. And we're bringing the octaves up by one on steps four and step 10. So with that being said, step four is one octave up, and then 10 is one octave up as well. Okay, so here as well, we have a little bit of randomization going, right? So our trig probability is gonna be obviously at 100% by default. However, we wanna do a little randomization at 40.8 here. So on our trig probability, 40.8. So what's kind of cool about this is that 
this regens and it's giving us a randomization if something will play it might play it might not play so it's kind of nice that, that random is to it So every so often we're going to have drop notes that kind of go kind of happen and then those delays are going to kind of carry that which is kind of a cool effect as well and then we're doing a little bit of randomization on the gate length at 24.8 so 24.8 something like here and what's kind of cool about the gate length randomness is you kind of just get a different feel every single time that don't might be might be a little bit longer might be shorter and it kind of just adds more to that randomness vibe But yeah, that's pretty much, I think we're pretty close here. I don't think we added anything else. We have some slide. Oh yes, we do have a 10% of slide, which is kind of cool. So keep in mind with this slide, a little goes a long way. So 10% is more than enough for that as well. And like I said, it's perfect for the different tonalities. So now we have the tone mapped here, so. You were pretty close. Yeah, so there we go. That's how to make this ARP ambient resonance. So it's a lot of fun and it's a little bit longer than most of these patches here, but it's really cool to make something interesting like this. It's an ARP, you can kind of use it kind of in the background and it kind of just makes things do whatever you want it to do, I suppose. But anyway, if you want to have a free copy of this, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.